All right, welcome to another Sales After Dark. Why? Because money never sleep with Victor Antonio. Thank you for being here, guys. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about the upside of virtual selling. That's the big teaser. But before I do that, a message from our sponsor. Pipe Drive is the first CRM platform made for salespeople by salespeople. There are four things that Pipe Drive does extremely well to help your business grow. One, manage leads and deals by getting your leads fed straight into your sales pipelines around the clock from your custom chatbot and web forms. Two, track calls, emails, contact history in order to have full customer visibility and control of your schedule. Eliminate busy work by also automating repetitive administrative tasks that learns from artificial intelligence. Insights and reports are also available so you can do a deep dive into metrics customized for your business and measure company performance against set goals. So go to pipedrive.live forward slash Victor Antonio, sign up and get an extended trial of 30 days free plus 25% off the first three months by simply using the promo code Victor Antonio. Again, the link is pipedrive.live forward slash Victor Antonio. All right. Man, are you super excited. Now, if you're watching this on the replay, fast forward another five minutes because I'm going to say hi to my tribe right here real quick. Uh, and like I said, uh, today's topic is going to be virtual selling. Man, I've had, I had some interesting conversations today uh, with clients, you know, speaking virtually, man. I I'll tell you some of these, uh, some of the things people say to me, it's just like, why did you say that, right? It's just like mentally doesn't make sense. And many times I think, and this will make sense as we get into this, people psych themselves out. I don't know if they just give themselves excuses to not want to be successful. They psych themselves out. It's like they talk to themselves and they talk themselves out of things or that they can't do things. So we're going to talk about that. So like I said, I had an interesting conversation with a client today. Uh, do you ever have a conversation with a client and you just want to you just want to strangle them through the video? Just like, you know, hey, you're not seeing it, right? Uh, we can't do that. But anyway, sales after dark. By the way, if you haven't you guys probably have subscribed, so if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Also, hit the little notification button. And if you like it, please don't leave here without liking it down there. Uh, all the information is in the description, so for links and stuff like that, go down to the description, especially if you're on uh, YouTube. All right, man. Oh, man, people are popping on now. So let me just go, let me clear this out real quick. Let me just go ahead and tap this out. Let me clear this so I can say hi to my friends. Clear the canvas. Let's go white. Boom, so I can bring on the comments. Here we are. All right, let's start from the top. And as always, Inkle John in the house, the value merchant, man. Thank you for coming. Tho is in the house from the CA. CA and the VA worldwide, man. Uh, we got Mike Janice, man. Always a pleasure to have you, man. We're live. What's up, big? Bring the heat, man. I'm in the heat here in Georgia, man. I am in the heat. And you the man, 1K. Good evening, everyone. Transition to, by the way, I really like when you guys say good evening to everybody else. That's pretty cool, man. Uh, transition to a new career in car sales this past Monday. Never sold before. Three cars in three days. Focused on value, 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 b b b value. That's what I'm talking. You the man, you the man. There you go. I love it, man. Congratulations, man. All seriously, congratulations. Uh, hello, Victor and everyone. Duncan, appreciate the shout out to everybody. Good morning with some hearts. Bam, bam, right back at you. Thank you very much. Uniman says, membership in the academy already paid for. Thank you very much, Victor. Congratulations. Sell cars, get into the academy, boom. And by the way, if you're not part of that academy, the question is why not? And by the way, there's a subscribe thing right there. Uh, Duncan says, <laughs> Duncan, man, you're killing me here, man. Duncan is saying to me something about freestyle and glow sticks. Hey, Victor, when are you going to break out the glow sticks and do some freestyle, man? Hey, Duncan, I don't know if you know this, but I have on wax, like wax, uh, one of the original Run DMC albums and also Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five on wax, the message. If you know what that is, hit me with a one, man, because you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, Chris Herrick, ready to go, man. Thank you, Chris, for being here, man. TJ in the house. Good day, Master VA, just in time, and you're always in time. Gata, all right. When Las Vegas is in the house, we are good to go, man. Todd Weinstein, hey, your idea of buying the virtual cup of coffee idea worked. A $20 e-gift card got me an appointment next week. You the man, King Vic. By the way, that I'm telling you that virtual coffee gift card, 
not only does it allow you to, it's almost like a conversation starter, but it's almost like a pattern interrupt. People don't expect it. And so if you're using it the right way, which apparently you are, man, it does work. The law of reciprocation does work. Bridget is in town. Good to see you. Lovely. Pete, my man. Pete, I am up for virtual selling, and I know I owe you a response to your email. Pete, I've not forgotten you. My day got away from me today, man, after I got uh, sent you that first email back. So we'll get to you. We'll not ignore you. Pete. All right. We got, what was your favorite gift you either gave or received from a customer? Oh, man, that's a good question. So favorite gift given, trying to get into a client trying to grab his attention. True story, not, not, not playing. We're in Latin America, right? And the guy starts talking about how he likes Metallica, right? And around that time, Metallica did this thing with, the, uh, with uh, some symphony, right? And they had this CD box set. And I remember when I came back to the US, I bought the box set. And it was like almost like 80, 90 bucks, whatever it was at the time. And I remember I sent it via courier to him and the guy was floored because this is like a month later, and he wasn't able to get the CD set, and, and he, there it is, I just sent it to him. And that was, to him, very impactful. The coolest gift I got, uh, without, uh, this is another story, but here's a short version of it. I helped a young man who was, I'll say 23 at the time, father gave him a million dollars to invest, he basically lost about more than half of that, I sold him a system, did type of swap deal. I gave it to him at a discount, but I also sold his equipment into the secondary market. About a year, two years later, man, his business was booming again. He was doing exceptionally well. Him and his father, his uncle, invited me out to dinner, and they gave me a Chopard watch, one of those like Chopard watch. It was like a $5,000 watch as a simple thank you. And in case you're gonna think about it, did you claim that, Victor? Did you tell your company? I actually, as soon as I received the watch, got back to the hotel, I told my boss about it, uh, the president of the company, and she said, well earned, you deserve it, it's a beautiful gift. So that was the best gift I ever got, man. And by the way, yes, I still have it, yeah. Uh, good evening, from the Bay Area, Matt Kush Patel. All right, Austin in the house. Man, we're just talking about Austin today. Fam Ahun, did I get that right? Fam Ahun. I think I got it, man. Austin, great place to be, man. Some of the, the restaurants there, man, the pulled pork there is just incredible. What is it? What is it? Sixth Street, I think? It's a nice place to go. Sales after dark makes my Thursday. Luigi Giovanetti, man. Glad you're here. And then there is the troublemaker of group. Every tribe has to have a troublemaker. I have declared the following person the ultimate troublemaker in my tribe. With much love. There he is. Rod Vidre. I don't know who he is, but he just keeps just harassing me. Anyway, Rod in the house, ready to learn and earn, Matt. Hey, Matt. Great to have you. Cheryl says, good morning. Right back at you. Good evening on my side. Good morning. Ramesh. Love it. Craig Max. Love it. Do you remember the singer, Craig Mack? Bam. Give me one. Bam. Love it. Sales Velocity Academy uh, rocks. It gives you Victor 24-7. That might be too much, Victor, but thank you, Pete. Appreciate that, man. All right, man. You guys know what I'm talking about. Morning from Malaysia. Zacharin, thank you, man. Uh, Todd Beck, Vic is the king of rock. I don't know about that, but yeah, that is one of the albums I do have, actually, from Run DMC. Remember that one? That was a good one, right? I love that one. Uh, Jocelyn said, let's do this. She's like, Victor, stop talking, shop, showing comments. Let's just get to this. Victor, stop messing around. Jada, Jada Beats from Australia. Hey, mate. Uh, Metallica, what was the symphony? What was the s and I I don't know what S&M stands for besides uh, sadomasochism. Uh... Just hit spa treatment story, selling twice, a lot of <laughs> yeah, aha moments. Good evening. Love your t-shirt. So a Taino, so my family's from uh, Puerto Rico. And so the Indians on the island of Puerto Rico were Taino. And somebody gave me this as a gift, and I thought it was cool, man. So if you feel like giving me a cool shirt, it's got to be cool, though. Don't just give me your company shirt. Give me a cool shirt. Send the large, man. Who knows? I might wear it on sales after dark, man. Uh, hey, Victor, love learning from you. New York in the house. Jimmy G. Uh, and I got a couple more that I'm gonna jump into the content here. Notebook out, pen ready, mind is open. Remember, never have a closed mind because you'll never learn anything. Never have an open mind because people fill it up with junk. Always have a critical mind. So I want you to have a critical mind. Listen to what I'm saying. Say, man, can I use it? But I, but I love your, I love your mindset, man. I love it. Uh, flavor in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like Slick Rick? Who? Lottie Dottie? You mean that guy? Lottie Dottie? Of course. Who doesn't like Slick Rick, man? All the jewels and everything. Who likes to party? Yeah, Lottie Dottie. Uh, I'm, I'm truly from Chicago, like the hood. I'm not joking. So, you know, you can test me all you want. Hi, Sheila from Malaysia. 
a uh, Hi Vic, saludos. Elkin, saludos también. Igualmente, there he is, Mr. Trinidad himself, Mr. Salesman from Trinidad, Jared Best Mitchell. Again, if you're not following this guy, he's got some great content on Instagram, man. I, I love hearing from him. So, you know, check him out. Zork, hey man. Hey man, right back to Zork. I don't recognize the name. Let me know where you're from, Zork, man. I'm just saying hi to a couple of people. Always like to know where you're from. Barbara Tyree, give a good, nice hello. Thank you, right back. Lily Williams. I've never heard that one. Lily. It's kind of a cool name. All right. We're ready to jump into it. Lily. Uh, one more. Lily says, today, today, today. I get that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was a San Francisco Symphony. Uh, Master Vic, man, man, good for you, man. The Beat Nuts Baby, man. I love it, man. You guys are good. All right, let's jump into content before people start getting mad at me because I'm not jumping into the content. All right, so I'm having this conversation with a client today, right? Good conversation, not a bad conversation, but you ever talk to five people? Like there's five people. You got all those little, you know, windows up um, and there's always that one person. Do you know what I'm talking about? There's always that one person. And just to give you a visual, so they're all like lined up, right? Let's see if I got the right pen up. They're all like lined up, you know, they're all like on the top of the, you know, you're doing a Zoom call, you know, you got the, you got the big heads right here, right? And so I was like right here talking, obviously, and then I'm talking and then over here, that guy right there, you could just tell he's not in the game. Because one, one of the things I do when it comes to virtual selling or virtual communicating, I'm watching the windows. I'm scanning the windows constantly. I'm looking at body language. I'm looking at how they're reacting. I'm even looking at their background, whatever they're in, right, to, to understand. And this one guy's just like. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm like, what the hell, right? And I knew, and I said, and I, and I was waiting for it. So I'm explaining, you know, a, a couple of things we're going through. And I knew this guy was going to be the belligerent one, right? And so we're talking about an event where uh, they're doing. And I'm outlining the keynote that I'm going to give virtually, right? And he's like, not looking at the screen, just. And at that point, I go, okay, this guy's going to chime in eventually. And so he finally chimes in. And his whole thing was, you know you're in trouble when somebody says this. You know, I hear what you're saying, Victor. Now, I don't know. I could be wrong. Now, let me just pause here. When somebody says, I hear what you're saying, I don't know. I could be wrong. Or my other favorite one, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Uh, now, I, I could be mistaken, but, right? Or, you know, some variation of that. Yeah, you know, I, I like what you said, but, right? And that's when you know it's coming your way. And so the, the conversation went down a rabbit hole in terms of virtual selling. You know, is it, can it really replace face to face? And I'm like, nothing can ever replace. It's like, you, you would never say that cold calling, let's say outbound would replace inbound or inbound would replace outbound. You use a combination of both, whatever fits, right? And I, and I started making the case because he was like, well, I just don't see virtual selling as effective. And I don't know if this is worth our time. And I'm like, are you on drugs right now? I didn't want to say that. I didn't say that. But I'm like, you, you're not understanding. And so I started listing out, just like right off the dome, I just started listing out the advantages. I said, have you thought about the advantages of virtual selling? And he's like, what do you mean, the advantage? Well, there's several advantages. He goes, I'm sure there are. I said, well, can you tell me any of them? And he said, well, and he stumbled, he hesitated, he said a couple of things, just babbled, but it didn't make any sense. But anyway, the call ended well close the deal, agreed on the agenda, we're going forward, all good, right? But that, that prompted me to kind of put this, this for tonight, I go, you know what, that's going to be the topic tonight. Let me talk about, because you know, we're hearing this thing about virtual selling, remote selling, distant selling, no touch selling, every, any variation of flavor you want to throw on top of that. It ba basically, it's us selling at a distance. Now, I've been selling at a distance since 2008. This is nothing new for me, right? I'm used to this. The only thing that's changed is probably the studio look. And so what I've done is I've put a list of things that I think would be advantageous. Let's look at the advantages of virtual selling. So I'm going to walk through seven upsides, seven advantages of virtual selling. And then let's just talk about it. Because if you're thinking today, you know, I'm not effective at selling, look, effective at selling virtually, maybe it doesn't work. There are plenty of upsides. If you're a manager, or a business owner, you're gonna love this because there are so many advantages right now and I think we're not seeing them. The smart salespeople are seeing them like, okay, this is an opportunity. You know, this crisis that we're in, trust me, there are a lot of people out there going, 
Never let a good crisis go to waste. We've all heard that phrase, right? Never let a good crisis go to waste. And I'm telling you right now, people are taking advantage of this shift in how we sell. So let's go through. If I can highlight, let me go through and then we can debate them. We can, I'll have a conversation with you, right? So like number one, let me give you number one reason why virtual selling is more effective today. The thing is now, I'll just use this phrase, distance is, is equals, I'll just put obliterated. I think that's a good word. Distance is obliterated. I think I was, basically means poof, gone. Think about it. Doesn't matter anymore where you're at. Doesn't matter, it could be global or local. There is no more distance. Everything is selling through the camera, selling through the wire, selling through fiber optics, selling through wireless space, right? All of a sudden, distance isn't an issue. Now, we've known this for a while, right? But yet, a lot of salespeople still needed to go see the customer. See, for some reason, salespeople have it in their head. And I get this, this is years of conditioning, no, decades of conditioning, that in order to really close a deal, I really gotta sit down with the client. I gotta take them out to lunch, I gotta take them out to dinner, I gotta slap them in the back, I gotta, hey, what's up? You know, I gotta have that face-to-face -face interaction. And the reality is, no, you don't. No, you don't. That's not a default must have. So now think about this. If distance is obliterated, let's look at the call structure. I mean, think about this right here. If you're not traveling anymore, look at the call structure. I mean, you don't have to travel anymore, right? I mean, first of all, it was getting uncomfortable to travel. Now I travel a lot, maybe a lot of you guys travel, but if you had to take one business trip, because let's, let's walk through the process. You set up a meeting with the customer, right? You set up a meeting. Now you got to take one day to, let's say, fly out there. Let's say you're in Alabama, right? Or here in Georgia, you're in Georgia. And now you got to fly to California. California is about three, four hours, whatever it is, right? Pretty much you eat up your whole day, right? And maybe you can have dinner with the client in the evening if you leave early in the morning, but pretty much day one is done, right? Then you meet with the client day two and then you fly back day three, right? So that's three days out of pocket, right? Now, I don't know what the average rate for a salesperson is. In other words, what it's costing a company per day, but you take that cost, you take travel costs, right? Just the travel, probably a $1,000 ticket, $800, whatever it may be. Hotel on top of that, you had to wine and dine the client. I can honestly say that that trip probably cost the company, I'm gonna say $5,000. Just that one trip. And there's no guarantee that something successful happened on that one trip, but that's $5,000. Now, the company I was talking to today had a, has 150 salespeople. 150. 105, 150. Now, let's just slow down. Let's say that one salesperson travels three times, right? No, let's say four times. It makes it easy to multiply. Four times. Then, if we go by this number, that could possibly mean 20K right? Per month. 20K times 12. I can't do my math. What's that? 40, 20, something like that. Is that 240,000? It's like, what is it? 10? Yeah, 200,000. 240,000. That's $240,000, right? I mean, run these numbers. That's 240,000 for one salesperson. That's the cost of sales. But you multiply 240,000 by 150, Come on, that's a big number. It's a huge number. Now that number has been whittled down. I'm not saying to almost anything, but come on. Now, it took me three days to meet with one client who probably said, let me think about it. Maybe I'll get back to you. I'll send you the spec. We'll send you a bid, proposal, whatever it may be. Now I can do that from my home office. So number one is because we've obliterated distance, the cost of what selling has gone down. Also think about this, the opportunity cost. When that person traveled three days, right? That means they weren't doing things, assuming they weren't doing anything else, they missed out on three days of opportunity. So keep in mind that there's a big cost structure first, but at the same time, this is costing, the cost of sales continues to go up. So this is big for a customer. So this is number one. Do you agree with that one? Give me a one if you like the, like the thought, zero if you disagree, and if you disagree with me, Tell me why you disagree with me. But I think it's a big one, man. I think it's a real big one, man. So let's see what we got. 5,000 doesn't take into account loss. Yeah, Brian, you got it. Brian says 5,000 doesn't take into account 
lost sales and opportunities during the time that we're traveling, right? That's the opportunity cost. And so that's number one. So that's, if I'm a business owner, I'm going, okay, this is not so bad. They're not traveling anymore. So that's number one. All right. So number two, let's go to number two. This one, oh, this is a good one. Managers will love this one. Salespeople may not like this one. Typically, if you had, we're getting a lot of ones, man. Number two. So let's go to number two. So number two, that is, now number two was hiring. I'll just say, I'll just write hiring is easier. Hiring is easier. Think about it. Why is hiring easier? Because let's say that I had to put somebody in California, like right, uh, the, the companies I want to target are in California. So I want to hire somebody in California. But let's say I'm just making a number up that the average salary, by the way, we're talking about the full compensation package, the full comp, we're talking base salary, commissions, compensation package is, and I'll make a number up, is about $250,000, right? For a salesperson, right? They're in California because cost is very high in California, $250,000, right? Now, if you come to Georgia, or no, better yet, let's go to Alabama, right? It's not gonna cost you $250,000 to hire the same person. In fact, I would argue that you can probably get two, maybe three, but I think more like two people to fill that role for that amount of money. But if you just wanted to replace that person, you can probably get somebody here with a compensation package of maybe a hundred to 200,000, maybe even less. So now it doesn't matter I don't need to have somebody there in California because we're always selling remote now. So now it doesn't matter. Now my pool for recruiting is that much bigger. Let me know what you think about that one. Number two, let me know what you think. Now I can recruit anywhere. So I can go to small towns, let's say Boise, Idaho, right? The Dakotas, right? Where the cost of living is not as high as let's say California. And all of a sudden I can hire people for half the cost, I don't know, maybe even a third of the cost in some cases. And that means I can build my business and probably get the same qualifications. And now, because distance doesn't matter, I can now find people throughout the United States. And this is not to say I can't look internationally either, right? So I can do that as well. I think if you look at hemispheres, you know, I can actually hire people from Latin America, right, to actually sell as well. I mean, think about it. So again, this is opening up a whole new hiring process. What do you guys think? Uh, I totally agree with number one. Number two, true. Just went through it myself. Brian says, I just went through it myself. Ramesh said the same thing. Very true. So again, that's advantage number two. And I know I'm not talking about sales yet. I'm still talking about cost structure. I'm going to get to the sales piece in just a bit. So number three is, now let's go back to my original example, because now we're going to get into the part about sales. Typically, it took you what? One day to fly, one day to meet with the client, one day to get back. Three days, you're out of pocket, right? You're out of pocket. But now you're home virtually. So that means number three means you can have the number of meetings just went up. Because now I can schedule. I mean, how many meetings have you been scheduling every day? How many meetings can you now schedule in one day? It's amazing. The number of meetings, I mean, I'm looking at my calendar now, and I'm actually talking to more people per day than before the pandemic because it's easier and you can time block 30 minutes. I had a meeting set this morning. I swear to you, we got on there. We had the meeting, four of us got on there and we were done and I literally clocked it. I looked at it 13 minutes. All we needed to do was say a couple of things, agree on a couple of things. Everybody's like, good, good, good. I think we're done. Boom, 13 minutes. I never had a 13 minute meeting. And by the way, that was a go-ahead money meeting for me, right? And so that was a great meeting. And that was just one meeting. And that means all I had to do was go downstairs, get some coffee, come back up here, wait another 15 minutes, and then handle the next call. So now we can do more meetings, which means that increases our probability of what? Getting more people involved into the buying process and actually closing more deals. This is a big upside. We can do that. What do you think of that? Uh... Let me go here. Let me pull some of these comments up, man. You guys are coming at me hard here. Uh, think of the possibilities in interviews. Yes, yes, absolutely. More meetings, more money. I like the way Pete thinks, man. I like the way you think, man. More. Also, let me see. Love versus. Uh, more time to sell and make money. Huge for commission-based sales. Yeah, I agree. Uh, 
Rob says, I agree, you can hire from anywhere. I get you. And again, it's, we got a bigger pool of people to hire from. And by the way, this works the other way around. If you wanted to work with a certain company, but you weren't in that city, right? Now, that doesn't matter. Distance is obliterated. So now maybe that company you've been dying to work for, now you can contact us, hey, let's do this remotely. And maybe they'll be more likely to do it. So uh, pizza on the amen, my man. So that's number two. Or number three, rather. All right, number, get rid of this. Number four. Have you noticed this or is it just me? Number four is, I'm just gonna say higher access. Something interesting is happening in the market. Quiet, but it's happening. And what's happening is that if you recall that I talked about the Gartner study, the Gartner study says that, and we're talking pre-pandemic here, that there are typically 11 decision makers in any buying B2B buying process. Now think about it. 11. Do you think there's still 11? I don't think there's still 11. Some people have been furloughed, downsized, whatever it may be. So now you may have teams that are only five. You may have teams that are only three. Heck, you may even have one decision maker who now concentrates and makes all that decisions. But here's what's interesting. They're at home. And I'm not saying they're at home doing anything. These executives that you've been dying to talk to, these decision makers, don't have anywhere to go. They're at home. Sure, they're handling a lot of calls. They're handling a lot of problems. They're having a lot of Zoom calls. So there's a lot of Zoom fatigue out there. People are getting tired of getting on Zoom calls. I get that. But your ability to access people at a higher level is a big plus today. And I think we need to think about that. Has anybody had that experience where now you're able to connect with people? Let's say you go on LinkedIn, you use sales, sales Navigator, you find the right person, and boom, you try to connect with them. And the chances today are much higher than they were pre-pandemic. And you know that as the higher you go in making a decision, trying to get the decision maker, the more likely you are to get faster, better results. So let me know what you think. Uh, you guys got great comments here. Let me put a blank sheet up here so I can see it. And you guys got... Uh, Bridget, let's see what you got, Bridget. I got more done and see more people because I don't have to travel to see people. Average drive in time in Houston is 45 minutes. We're not even talking about the drive. I was just talking about the flight. Throw the drive in there as well, and you really begin to add things up, Bridget. You're so on it. You're so on it. You're right. Uh, Jocelyn says, that's a good point. You can maximize your schedule and sales. Sell smarter, not harder. There it is, Jocelyn. You got it. It's profitable than before. I think it is, man. I think there's some... You know, we'll talk about volume in just a bit and getting more deals. But yeah, I think you're, you're at least reducing your cost, right? Because the way profit works is, you know, you can reduce costs, but if your sales go down, then your profit margin still stays the same. But bottom line is you can reduce your cost. And I think companies are reevaluating their cost structure today. In other words, do I need this many people? You know, a lot of companies, who was it? Um, I'm trying to think of the company that made a decision today. It's called REI. They sell like, like, Climbing equipment, outdoor equipment, REI. They were building, they're building this big megaplex. And they basically just said, we're going to sell it. We're going to have, we're going to restructure. We're going to have people working from home. New structure, millions of dollars. We're not going to use it. Nobody's moving in. We're going to sell it. And we're going to street structure so people can work from home. The new reality. Remote selling, remote management. This is what we're looking at right now. I'm telling you, the, the structures, this shift that we're going through, it's not even a shift. It's this... It's almost like grabbing those, uh, you know, those little globes that you shake and the snow floats around. So the pandemic did this. Eh. And then things are now settling. And I'm telling you, the structures that are coming out, shaking out, no pun intended, from all this is going to be totally different than what we're used to. But I think we should have gone into virtual selling years ago. But I think this pandemic has forced us to make that right turn. And now companies are reevaluating, questioning why are we doing it like this? Or why were we doing it like this? Why can't we just do it virtually? Or why can't we just do things differently? So, uh, and if you saw some of my other uh, live streams, I talked about how car companies, dealerships rather, dealerships are restructuring how they sell cars virtually through their websites. And they're actually selling more per salespeople with less salespeople. Amazing studies, man. Amazing numbers. Uh, let me see. So what I got here, I got George Strickland says, yep, seeing the same thing. Eight plus meetings per day. Boom. Register that, George. Register that. Hello, boss from Dubai. Love Dubai, especially the Burj Khalifa. So anyway, hello. I miss you too. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Absolutely much easier to get into the conversation via virtual than in person. Eliminates the gatekeeper. 
you know, all right, man, that's it. You, you get, you get, you're gonna get that one. It eliminates the gatekeeper because most people at home don't have a gatekeeper. Brian is so on it, man. I mean, think about it. I, I didn't even think about that. That should have been like number eight. If I known, if I thought about that, I go, that's right. You eliminate the gatekeeper, so it's, number eight is would have been that. So well done, man. Thank you, man. Uh, it's raining very heavily in Mumbai, India, and content is you're loving it, man. Hey, Amen. I know you when you get when it rains over there, whew, it rains, man. Another reason for selling virtually, right? There you go. My man, Doug Lehman, who breaks it down in layman terms. What do you got? Being more efficient to access people and connect better engagement. There it is, Doug. You got it, man. Uh, we'll have to talk, man, Doug. We haven't talked in a bit here. Ramesh, fourth is the most effective. Are you talking about the one I just had up there? Yeah, I think so. I think so, man. But wait for the other three, Ramesh. Don't be so judgmental yet. Wait for the other three, man. Uh, so let me see. Sparrow's tail is back. I do B2C and many times I can close deals via text message now. I'm telling you that there it is. I mean, it's just, you know, you're, you're, you often hear the word. I mean, it's a, it's a big word. You know, you've heard it before, but I think it's worth writing down. I think this word is worth writing down, you know. Omnichannel, man. By omnichannel is you're attacking customers, so to speak, from all different angles. And whether it's text messaging, email, you know, whether it's online, offline, you know, phone, whatever, virtually, via video, it's this is the new reality. So I love that, man. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, let me see. Uh-oh, Herb. Now, again, what I say, when somebody starts like this, maybe it's abstract here, but it's always... <laughs> You know it's coming. I'm just saying, every time you see that phrasing, you know, this may be abstract, but this may be off topic. Now, I don't know if I could be wrong here, but that's when you know I'm in trouble. I haven't even read the rest of it yet. Now I'll read the rest. I think companies want to run faster. So even if 11 people in the decision, those 11 are more readily available, they need to show results also. I just think that a lot of companies are saying, do I need this many people involved in a decision-making process? Because there's one thing getting in the room with 11 people, and then we can talk about it, do side conference, sidebars after the meeting. But to do this virtually, I think it becomes impossible. Like I said, I'm on the call with four people today, and even that was like trying to wrangle cats. Very difficult to do, man. So I think people are going to kind of move over to the uh, uh, less people. This will help employers pay employees more money because they can cut their overhead costs. Victor, what do you think? Totally disagree with you. Bridget, love you, but I disagree. I mean, yes, but the if I save money here, I'm not just going to give it to my employees. Here's what I'd rather do. So maybe here's where you can find some common ground, you and I, Bridget. So if I'm saving money, what I want to do is I would try to create a great compensation plan, maybe enrich the compensation plan for my salespeople, not give it to them but maybe enrich it, add some spiffs, right? Has some bonuses here and there if they do certain things, right? Things that are just out of the box or something that we need done. Now, when you look at the money you're saving also, keep in mind that you could maybe give your employees a little raise. I'm all about gain sharing, right? A little profit sharing at the end of the year with everybody who contributes. But keep in mind that companies right now are feeling very insecure about where this is going. And I am of the opinion that even at the end of the year, nothing will be resolved. Like mentally, nothing. I, you know this whole thing we're in right now, not knowing, left, right, school open, school not open, this, that, I think we'll still be there at the end of the year. And so I think 2021 is still gonna be a very, so I think companies who save money need to figure out how to best invest that money. And remember, one of the best ways to enrich your people is to keep, keep them employed. So that would be my answer. So. Look, I love enriching salespeople. That's, that's, I'm, I'm about enriching salespeople in the sense that give them a richer compensation plan, and if they can grow the business even more, it's a win-win. They get a little more, the company gets a little more, the company can hire more people, maybe even give raises if the money's there, and then grow the business that way. Do you agree with that, Bridget? That's how I kind of, you know, massage that one. Let me know what you think, Bridget. I work in retirement real estate. Beautiful photos and sales decks have become my best friend. <laughs> I love it, man, Patrick. I love it. Yeah. Hey, Patrick, I got a question for you. And anybody else can chime in on this one. Uh, I was reading a study. I'm not going to give you the answer, but I want to know what you have to say. The, they were talking about how, you know, if you had to do a presentation today and you had 30 slides, right? 
sorry, a little hot in here. If you had 30 slides, Patrick, do you still think you can go through 30 slides or have you found a new number more or less? Did you go up in number? Did you go down in number? Share with me what you think, Patrick. I like to hear that because this is an important point you're making that, you know, beautiful pictures, right? Slide decks, great looking slide decks are important, still very important. The question is, do you add more or you take away more? Like to know what you think, Patrick, and anybody else can chime in on that conversation. Love to hear your opinion. Uh, C.F. Jackson. All right. I've been participating in virtual networking events and reaching more people. I've been appreciating it. Isn't that, you know what I mean? I think we just, we're over the, uh, the fear of connecting virtually via video. And I think we're moving into a space of, okay, okay. It's acceptance. It's reach. It feels normal now. It's like when, you know, when we first started wearing masks, it was like, oh, this is weird and irritating. Now it's like almost a natural reaction for me. I walk into the store, I throw it out. It's like, I don't even think about it. I'm having conversation. Uh, with my mask on, and it's just really interesting how it's become normal. So I think having these meetings, these virtual meetings, have become very, very normal. Uh, love a cup of tea. Welcome. Been around. Haven't seen you in a while, so good to have you back. Uh, Jimmy, do you think relationships still? Uh, do you think relationships still matter now that we are in a virtual world? Are buyers now using their heads instead of relationships? I think that's an interesting question, Jimmy. And I think I know how you mean it. Let me let me let me dissect it because it seems like a simple question, but I think it's I think you're 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 trying to peel another layer back. And I the way I would answer it is that I think you're right. Is that in the sense that when we were there face to face, you know, it's almost like you can you can let me use the word feel the relationship, right? You can feel the relationship, right? Uh, you can feel you know. The, 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 the connection, the engagement, you know, you can feel that. You can't feel that as much virtually, right? And so that's one aspect. The other aspect is, is that even if we have a good relationship, Jimmy, you and I have a good relationship, right? And I don't want to make a decision right now. And I decided to get off the conference. And I mean, let me go think about it. I'll get back to you. Let's talk tomorrow, right? Because you're not in the same room with me, that connection, I think, isn't as strong, and that means when I jump off the call, I go from a hot state. By a hot state, I mean I'm mostly in what you're saying. Now I, get, I have a chance to think about it. I go back into my cold state. And so I think what we're going to see in the future is more, is I think the sales cycle may be extended. You know what I mean? Some people think it's going to shrink the sales cycle. And to some extent, in some businesses, you will see that. But I think it, it's going to create that... Because Some, sometimes we make a decision because we feel a connection with the person. And I think it's harder via video to do that. So I think relationships are going to be more important. But maybe the question is, is how do we establish almost the same level of relationships through video? I mean, that's really kind of the, 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 the golden, you know, the, the, the golden chalice, right? Or the golden ticket that if we can do this, if we can build that same connection, that warmth, I'll call it, right? That feeling of connection via video. If we can do that, and then, then I think we'll, we'll feel that. We won't need to be physically there, but I think we're having a hard time connecting via video because it feels awkward talking to an inanimate object. I'm in my studio by myself talking to a camera. It's just a little lens staring right back at me. I don't know what you guys are doing, kicking back, relaxing. So I, I think we have to get comfortable with that. And I'll give you one small example. Uh, uh, this past week, um, one of my clients was supposed to finish a video project. And he didn't finish the prod product project. And I said, well, what's going on? He said, man, I just, Victor, I don't feel comfortable in front of a camera. I don't like the way I look. There's nothing wrong with this guy. There's nothing wrong with this guy. But he can't get over himself. And so I think, I think that's the biggest challenge in connecting. So to your point is, Yes, I think when you look at this virtual world, relationships will be affected. Uh, you say, are buyers now using their heads instead of their relationship? I think they are. I think they're using their heads more. I think that's what you're really at. I think they're being more logical because we don't have a relationship. You didn't come to see me. You didn't take me out to dinner. I don't feel the law of reciprocation. I don't feel that connection. So yes, I'm in the cold state using my head more. And I think until we break the barrier, that whatever this barrier is between you and I, Jim, Jimmy, right now, this that you know, for us to feel a relationship, we need to kind of figure out how to break that, you know? And so like, even when I do this right here, it's I, let me get very meta about this. Let me analyze what I'm analyzing right now. And that is, I'm taking the time, Jimmy, to answer your question. 
And I'm also taking my time to answer questions in such a way that you go, you know, he's really given this question some thought, right? Which I am, and I'm doing this genuinely. And that's what customers want to feel. And I want you to feel that I'm actually trying to really answer your question and give you my perspective. And I think that's how we need to talk to people online. You know what I mean? Or virtually. So anyway, let me know if that helps a little bit. You tell me. Did I hit it? Did I miss it? I don't know. Yes, I have YouTube, Instagram, CRM, emails, and personal texts all going at the same time, spaced out strategically. Sparrow's tail, that's how you do it, man. If you can figure out what your cadence is, understand the customer journey, all those wonderful words, buzzwords, I think we're good. Albert, Ruva Calba, Ruva Calba. Should we change to virtual if we have never had to? Last seven years, all of my sales have been through phone and email. Is that considered virtual? I would say yes. I would say that's considered virtual. The only difference is, is video, right? So you've been selling virtually. I mean, if you look at telemarketers, that's virtual selling. You know, one could argue, well, wait a minute, it doesn't have video. No, it doesn't matter. It's virtual. You're not there. You're not physically there. Either you're there or you're not there. It's, it's that simple. And so text message, that's virtual selling. Email, virtual selling. So it is virtual selling. Uh, but and I, and I think what we mean in the context as we're talking about it right now is that when we're talking to the customer face to face, now we're having the face to face, this video connection, is that virtual? Of course it is. But everything you've been doing, Albert, I call it virtual, man. I don't, I don't see a change in what you're doing as being not effective anymore. I think it's just as effective, if not more effective. So look, here's, here's what's interesting, Albert, and that is like inside salespeople, you know, because if you think about it, the, you know, there were, there's inside salespeople and outside salespeople. And you guys now know how the process works. I'm gonna just take your comment down here, Albert, but I'll answer your question in more detail. And that is so, if we have, we have inside salespeople, just kind of, you know, you got SDRs, sales development reps, right? These are people that are inside. And people that are inside don't have as many years selling. That's why they start inside, right? And they're hoping to one day be outside salespeople, right? Right, out in the field somewhere, right? And so these guys or gals have a lot of years, right? And that's why they make more money, right? So SDRs, you know, maybe, I'm not saying all of them have to, but want to grow up to be what? Outside salespeople. They want to earn the, what, the right to be an outside salesperson. These guys, leads come in here, they do the qualification. When they deem it qualified, they pass the lead on to the salesperson, right? And so the SDRs see the salespeople making all the big money, so they, want, they aspire to be over here. But what's happening now, Albert, this is what's interesting, is that now we go virtual and the SDRs right here, these wonderful people who I love, these wonderful people are now in their name. This is their zone. They're like you, Albert. They're like, dude, I've been doing emails. I've been doing phone calls. I've been doing video conference calls on Skype, whatever maybe. These guys are in the zone. In fact, you know, these guys are going to start killing it. But these guys over here, I'm not saying all, I'm not trying to generalize, but a lot of these folks here who've never had to use a technology stack, never had to learn how to say those little things over the phone, pick up the phone, do the email, do the cadences, do all that. These guys have never had to do it, and now they find themselves in a situation where they're going, how, 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 do, I, how do I do this? How do I do this? And these guys are over here going, ha, 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 I know how to do it. And so I, I think that's an interesting dynamic. You're starting to see, these guys, their time has come. The phoenix is rising right here. And on this side, they better rise or these guys are gonna start taking their launch. And if I'm a company and my sales are not where they should be, I'm gonna look at inside versus outside. And maybe what I'll start doing is pulling back some of these accounts and give them to my inside salespeople and see what they can do with them. And if they start closing, I'm gonna start giving them more and maybe this I'm not saying it's going to go away, but it could be minimized or reduced. Just the thought for you guys to consider. I think it's an interesting concept. I think it's an interesting concept. So where was I at? All right, a couple more, and then I'll go back to number six, I think. You guys tell me if I've lost count. Uh, do you maybe have some videos about effective doing sales using Zoom? Yes. Uh, so in the that right there, the Sales Velocity Academy, I have a course, and that's what Pete's asking me. When's the next course? Pete, the next course is available. It's called Presenting Via Video. So that's also going to be part of the academy as well. So it's called No Touch Selling, and then there's Presenting Via Video. And the, the next one I'm going to develop is really a virtual sales playbook. 
And I think it's really how to put it all together so you can be effective at selling. So that's coming soon. So yeah, I got two courses on the Sales Velocity Academy just for that. And by the way, uh, Julian, I'm using a program. I tell people it's called, it's called Ecamm Live. This is the program I'm using right now, Ecamm Live. And the cool thing about Ecamm Live, it's like 240 bucks or whatever it is, is that I'm using this through Zoom. You know, I can use this rather through Zoom. I'm not using it right now, but I can actually have all this effect, like bring stuff in, like, you know, I can do this, I can do this, you know, have you zoom in, I can do this. I can do this all through Zoom using that program. So this is definitely a tool that if you want to be more effective at selling, I would get this tool. FYI, man. FYI. Uh... You, do, you you doing virtual selling from too long. I've been doing it a long time, man. It's, it's like I said, uh, especially Albert. Uh, muscles up here, I'll take it. Uh, let me see. Bridge says, I agree. Thanks for the clarity. Yeah, I agree. Like I said, you know, we want, we want to share the love, if you know what I mean, with the money and everything. So I get that. Even these higher position decision-making people in B2B are low in ego when taking meetings from home. Man, you know... That, that is such an interesting concept. That's, there, there, there is something psych, there's something psychological. You should, this, this, is, this, this one is worth studying a little bit. Let me just erase this. Uh, because, uh, Kamlesh, what you're saying is really interesting because there is something. There is something psychological. I think you're so on to something. I think you're, yeah, you're really thinking about this thing. When somebody's in their office, you know, when you go see them in their office, a big desk, you know, you know, graduation things on the you know, degree here, degree there, you know, and then they have people who worship them, if I can say it like that. And so, but what you're seeing is now people are at home and I think they've shed some of that ego. And that's what you're saying. They, they've shed some of that ego. It's not the same anymore. They've shed some of that ego. And I, I think they're easier to talk to. I think they're easier to talk to this is what I'm finding, that they're easier to talk to. You tell me what you think, Kamlesh. Are they easier to talk to? I think so, man. Love to hear what you have to say, man. It's a great point. Uh, I usually use just five to seven slides. Slides should, be, should amplify what you are saying, not the other way around. I agree with you 100%. Not going to argue with you there. Uh, I was on a course today, and the expert said 12 to 15 slides max. He said people cut out after that. Duncan, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, I, I saw somebody say 10, right? 10 slides. That was their max. They were like, just shorten it up. So that's how I was asking the question because I think you really have to, you shouldn't expand it. You have to almost shrink it, right? And so, uh, and again, presentations vary, right? Depending on what you're presenting. But I think that expert is absolutely right. I don't know what the magic number is, uh, but it is getting low there. Where do you find to be the best virtual selling platform? Zoom, Skype for Business, Blue Jeans, Cisco WebEx, or any other recommendation? My irritation today was that I was on, I was on Zoom, then I had to jump over to Skype Business, then I had to jump over to Web Microsoft, was it 365, and then I had to jump over to Ring DNA. Like I'm just going nuts. I'm downloading because two of them I had to download, like Ring DNA, and I think it was uh, I forgot what the other ones I had to download uh, the application. It's just irritating. Look, the most common one use is Zoom, so I like to use Zoom. Personally, I just use Zoom. I keep my life simple. Everybody knows how to use Zoom. Uh, but when I use it through this Ecamm Live, uh, this is kind of, uh, you can set up this camera through Ecamm Live so you can do all this stuff I'm talking about. And what I found out, Rod, is that when you do it through Ecamm Live, for some reason, they don't mess with your resolution. You know how they, you know how they're doing some traffic shaping now, if you don't know what I'm talking about? Basically, they're not giving you the full bandwidth. They actually throttle it down. And so then sometimes the resolution isn't as good. When I started using Ecamm Live, it seemed to give me more control over the resolution via Zoom. So I highly recommend this program, man. So that would be my recommendation right there. Great question, man. Uh, I'm gonna jump into the next one. We are back already, boss. Meeting customers face to face. Yep, no more Zoom here in Dubai. We are very happy back to normal. Much opportunities, more to achieve. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's never one or the other. So I'm not going to argue one or the other, like, we'll never do a Zoom meet. What I'm telling you, it's changed. And so if in Dubai, you're doing face-to-face. -face. Again, even if you, have, if you have to go to another country, let's say, I don't know, Saudi Arabia, from there, you might still have to do a Zoom call. And again, 
the fact that virtual is now acceptable, that's like another, you know, like another tool for us salespeople to use to our advantage. So maybe it isn't that we don't want to get, we want to get back to the face-to-face, -face, but maybe we can use virtual to qualify more. How's that? Because that might be the in-between state, right? We use virtual to qualify up to a certain point in the sales process. And then when we think we're at that moment where we need to go make the visit, boom, we go make the visit. And so it may be that mix. It may be that balance. So good for Dubai, man. Good for Dubai. Love it. Uh, one more and then I'm going to just jump. Patrick said way less slides. I knew you'd say that, Patrick. I I'm taking the opportunity to schedule an hour with the client and gain next steps, follow-up questions. More of a formality by scheduling a virtual meeting filters out time kickers. Yeah, see, see, this is what I'm talking. That's qualifying right there to the last question. This is where I would use it. I would find ways to qualify people. And again, just churn through people who, as you say, Patrick, are tire kickers. Thank you for that, brother. Appreciate you sharing that, man. Uh, so let me go. Where was I at? I have them right here. So the other one is, by the way, so number, I think, one, two, three, four, five. Number five, I didn't want to forget these. So number five is you can handle more number of clients. You can handle more clients. Think about this. Again, I know it's an obvious one, but if today you had 20 people in your, 20 companies in your portfolio, let's say it's B2B, you got 20 companies, maybe now because you're not traveling, you can handle 30 to 40. You can almost double your portfolio. You can go out and get more business. That's an obvious one, right? And so the ability to go out and get more business, put more people in your portfolio, gives you more opportunities to close more deals. And Again, if we can qualify early, we don't have to do a lot of face-to-face. -face. Let me know what you think of that one. Uh, what's right here? So I'm going to go through this. This is a big one. Okay, there's a lot of webinars, Zoom, out there trying to prospect clients. How we separate ours from others at the first time to be connected. What, what's your profound, what do you think about that? I think is what you're trying to say. So what you're saying is that there's a lot of people doing... I heard this phrase, I think it was the other day, it was like Zoom fatigue. People are getting tired of Zooming, right? There's, there's just too much Zooming going on. And so if you're trying to use Zoom, like free webinars, for example, because everybody's doing a free webinar, right? Everybody's doing a free webinar. But I'm, I'm going to go back to what Patrick said. Patrick Shipman, you know, in terms of doing his videos to, to figure out who are the tire kickers, the people who are not serious. You can do a free webinar to try to get a lead, right? into your funnel, right? Marketing, get a lead into your funnel. You got the email and that's part of the understanding or trying to track the customer journey, right? But have you ever tried, and, and this goes to Patrick's point, that if there's too many Zoom calls out there, maybe what you should do, just an idea, you should charge for your webinar. Now think about it. If you have a topic that's really important, right? Uh, for example, how to generate more sales through your, how to double your sales through your CRM you know, or something, you know, that has value and you charge for it, only the people who are serious about learning how to use a CRM to generate more sales are going to sign up. Now, I'm not saying you have to charge a lot of money. It could be a small amount of money, but even if it's only five or $10 or $20, let's say $20, it doesn't matter. The fact that they paid $20 just to hear you has already qualified them maybe as not a tire kicker, as Patrick would say, but maybe a little more serious. So maybe the, the question is, how do we not only compete with other people doing webinars, but how do we find qualified people to come to our webinars? And I think sometimes charging a small fee for a webinar, and I'm not, I'm not talking about a 60-minute webinar. I'm talking about a, maybe a two, two-and-a-half-hour webinar where you're really giving real value. And the people that will sign up, I'm telling you, will demonstrate that they're serious about your product. So let me know what you think of that idea because I think, I think Patrick's on to something about qualifying people and getting them out of there. Uh, Patrick makes closer to perfect uh, we have to get comfortable with virtual selling. There it is, man. You got it, man. You got it. Uh, new skill sets for the new reality. You got it. You got it. You got it. You guys are on here. Inkle, what do you got to say? It's a long one. Uh, in hiring, we need uh, delectus personae or trust and confidence. I don't know what delectus personae is. So help me with that. How do you monitor them? Your distance employee without being micromanaged with them. I mean, how do you check on them properly? Oh, I mean, on that... It's a good point because you're, 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 you're putting that as a con. Uh, I, I'm going to put it back in the pro column because the question is, what metrics are you measuring? This is the important thing is what KPIs are you measuring? Because if you're measuring the right KPIs and they're the ones that really count, what they do down here, I don't care. So, for example, when I have salespeople, 
you know, I don't want to know what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't want to know because I don't want to micromanage them. I just need to know if you're making the phone calls, I don't think that's a good KPI. I, to me, that's not a good metric. How many meetings are they setting with C-level executives per week? That's a metric for me. How many meetings are you setting with C-levels from targeted groups within a certain market niche or certain market segment? That to me is a better KPI than how many calls you're making. Because a person could just be making calls just to hit the, let's say they're doing 100 calls a day, maybe 50, right? They're doing 50 calls, but they're calling people that can't make a decision. So I don't care about how many calls they make, but I want to know how many meetings they make. And so let's say that I set the metric at five meetings per week. So that's one per day. I just need five meetings per week. I don't care if they don't work for four days. They could be at the beach for four days. I don't care. What I'm going to say is, did you give me my five meetings? So it's the metrics that matter, not the actual activity. That's how I would kind of parse that a little bit. All right. So speaking of market share and calling. So number six. Number six is this. Take market share. So, so this is interesting. Take market share means right now, again, a lot of salespeople are like, well, I don't know. I'm not connecting. I'm, and, and they're pulling back from the sales process. So they're pulling back from the sales process. And what do you think is happening? They're letting their competitors walk right in. Now is the time. I mean, if, if, man, if you're in B2B, if you're specifically in B2B, now is the time to go after those big clients, those big elephants, those big white elephants you've been wanting to nail, right? You've been wanting to get in. You know those companies that are already buying from somebody else? Now is the time to come in there, so to speak, virtually and present your case. In other words, now is the time to go in there and talk about, hey, you've been doing it with this company, but here's what we have. Here's our options. And again, you have more access to decision makers. They're more open to listening to you. They're trying to find ways to reduce costs and expand their market share, right? They're trying to find ways to maintain their business, right? Whatever the mode they're in, now is the time for you to go in there and try to take some market share again. The statement is always, never let a good crisis go to waste. And this is a good crisis, if I can say good crisis, if you, you know what I mean, right? So if this is a crisis, how do we take advantage of it? And now is the time to go after new market share. So let me give you the last one. So you know how sometimes when we're talking to a client, you know, we, we've, you know one of the things that's happening right now is there's always a buying process, right? So number seven is, I'll just put number seven under a very vague one, the buying process. Before the pandemic, and again, it's more B2B, before the pandemic, buying processes were already set up, right? In fact, sometimes we ask, and you know, it's hard to get an idea of what the buying process is. Now is the time to ask your clients, what's the buying process? Because it's probably changed. The buying process has totally changed. Now, if the buying process has changed, I have to believe that different people are now probably involved in that chain and that these different people that are involved in that buying process, decision makers, purchasing, whatever it may be, may be more open to looking at your product or your solution because they're trying to figure out how do we be more cost effective. So the buying process has changed in a lot of these companies and maybe again as part of market share, this could have been 6A, as part of market share is how did the buying process change and how can we now ask that question, understand it better, and then begin to try to sell to that buying process. Let me know what you think of the last two, market share and buying process. Uh, does that make sense? Can you go in there and grab more business? Have you gone in there to grab more business? Let me see what you got. And we'll start wrapping up. Man, time flies with you guys, man. I, is it me or is it just, time just flies, man. Or maybe I just talk too much, one of the two. All right, uh, Victor, referencing your, let me bring it back up here. Referencing your story of the guy being uncomfortable being in front of the camera, how about starting with audio, podcasts, start simple? Yeah. I mean, you know, in his case, he was actually trying to, you know, um, develop courses, right? And so he was in his head. And so, and a lot of people have this problem. And so I've met a lot of people, though, CF, that they, they don't even like their voices. <laughs> you know what I mean? But in this case, maybe that would work to suggest that. Uh, but, you know, in this case, we didn't want to create podcasts. We want to create video courses online so they can be sold. And so that's why the video piece was important. But your point is well taken. Sometimes you just got to start with the easy layups, right? Which is just the audio part. But it'd be amazing how you talk to people and they're like, you know what? Uh, my voice sounds horrible. 
Albert says, thank you, Vic. Thanks, Victor. I think you're right on the mark. Yeah, I think you're virtual. You've been virtual selling, man. You've been way ahead of the game for many years now. Yo, Victor, thanks for these videos, man. Yo, Kesh, you're very welcome, mess. Very welcome. Kesh Kalesh. Is that your real name, man? That's a cool name. From Malaysia, man. All, all good, man. Uh, Shrukesh Gogambe. Virtually, we can pitch more people in one go than face-to-face. -face. I agree. And so, but the, the, but the question, I think, maybe it was Patrick that said the question. I forgot who asked it, so I apologize. I, I don't remember. But the question is, you know, if we're not doing it face-to-face, -face, are people being more logical or rational about their decision? And, and it, does that play into this whole virtual selling game? And I think that's a fascinating question to think about because sometimes we buy from people because not that their product differences anymore. We buy because we want to work with that person. But if we don't have the opportunity to make that connection, then I'm going to be more cerebral about it. Right? Maybe more logical about it. So that's something that has to be explored a little more. You know, I mean, it's just a, it's a great perspective that was provided, man. So I appreciate that insight. I think it was, yeah, Patrick that gave me that. So thank you. Rod, troublemaker Rod, appreciate it. What are your thoughts on sending customer a follow-up two-minute video after the presentation if it didn't manage to close them there? And then, and what's your recommendation for software to do that? Well, I think I've mentioned, well, the software I like is Loom. Loom is so easy to use. That was this one. And there's Bonbon or something like that. I just like Loom. I'm one of these guys that I find one tool and I stick to it. I, there's many options, but I just use Loom. Simple to use, not expensive. Uh, and you can send your presentation and then put your little video inside the presentation. So I like that tool. Uh, I, you know, whether it's two minutes or not, I mean, I don't know what the time frame is. Every time you do a study, it's different. But, but I think that, you know, Rod, when we talk about, you know, when you, be, you begin a presentation, you start at point A and you're going to jump all the way to point Z, to point Z, and then you want that customer to walk away with, you know, three key things that you know are going to position you better than your competition. So I would make those videos, first of all, so one, I would use Loom. Two, I would figure out what my three key messages are, or four, but try to keep it to three, and that's what my video content would be about. And then I would follow up. Two minutes could be, it could be five, ten minutes, you know what I mean? Um, it depends. Uh, I think if um, I'm going to use a study, I forgot who did the study. I think it was Vanilla Soft that said, you know, if you contact somebody within 30 to 60 minutes, um, you know, after they've contacted you, that that's kind of the sweet spot. So maybe 30 to 60 minutes, you don't have to do it right away. Uh, but maybe it's more effective that way. I don't know. I don't have the answer for that because, you know, metrics are everywhere. Some say faster, sooner, some say a little later. Uh, I wouldn't go past an hour, though. You know, I would, I would want that reinforcement to be right there. So, I mean, just feel it, man. In fact, why don't you try a couple? And then why don't you try like some within five minutes and then some within an hour and then report back, man. I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Be great, man. Uh, yes, it really saves time and money during these times. Less stress from the terrible traffic. I mean, if you're international, like I've traveled international obviously quite a bit. And I mean, we have bad traffic here, but someplace international, the traffic is just horrible. And so virtual is almost like a godsend, right? It's the way to do it. So I, I agree with you, TJ. I agree 100%. The topic is great. Great information that will help me grow. I have a full time uh, and my business. Virtual selling allows me to see more people after work. Way to go, Bridget. Do your thing, girl. Do your thing. Uh, so it says, I think virtually will stay hand to hand with normal meeting and could be used as a facilitator for closing more deals, even after the dark. <laughs> you're so awesome. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I think you're right. I think you're right. Hey, like I said, we're all trying to figure it out, right? So, you know, it's almost like all these experts trying to give you an opinion on what's going to happen with the virus. I don't think a lot of people really know. I think we're making educated guesses, right? And I think with this virtual selling, I think we're making educated guesses as well. We're trying to figure out where is this thing going to land, you know? Uh, where's, where are we going to be? So, Pete, I appreciate your positive words. Number seven, buyers are still trying to figure out their buying process. Great opportunity to help them shape the process to your advantage. Brian's on a roll tonight, man, but that's it. They're still trying to figure it out because so many things are changing within their business. You got to understand, this is a major disruption to cost structures, uh, to, to revenue structures, to management structures. I mean, everything. It's almost like really like taking that globe and shaking it 
and companies are trying to figure out how, how is this going to work from now on? What do we invest in? What do we pull back on? What do we put money into? You know, what do we hold on? They're trying, they're trying to figure all this out. And all these processes that have been put in place are now being called into question. Do we really need this? If we're not working from home, do we really need that? So all this is going on. So again, there might be an opportunity to go in there and say, what is your buying process? And maybe help you define that and then use it to your advantage, as Brian says. Great point, Matt. Uh, adapting to a... So the buying process is huge, right? Along with what Brian just said, man. Inkle John says, thanks as always, man. How do you build a rapport in the first touch? Would you suggest uh, that stalk them first and then <laughs> and know their interests? Then that's the first talking point. No, it's creepy, man. I think it's creepy when somebody starts telling me things about me. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, we don't even know each other. It feels creepy sometimes. Um, I think from a business standpoint, like if I'm following somebody on LinkedIn, so I'll use the B2B because LinkedIn, I can talk about, I can begin to connect with them. Hey, I love what you said about this. I love what you said about that. Hey, or they post something, you can share that. That's one way. You can do the same thing, let's say for B2C on Facebook, you know, on Twitter. You know, you just, you begin to engage people softly. I'm tired of people. I've talked about this before. One of my live streams, I called it LinkedIn loonies, is that people, they just connect with you and already they try to pitch you something. They just connect with you and just try to pitch something. So. I, it's, you don't need to know their hobbies or anything like that. I would look at the content that they're posting and then really try to find ways to relate to what they're posting and maybe begin a dialogue. And then next step would be to get a connection and then maybe next step to continue more dialogue, sharing, liking, you know, resharing, posting something, and then find your moment to actually go in and try to get that connection. So uh, I'm with you. So uh, in a virtual meeting, so talk about what's going uh, Tony, yo, 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 right back at you, man. Uh, I think it's, I think we're thinking bomb, is it, is it bomb, bomb or bomb, B-O-M, B-O-M, Rob? You guys look it up, man. Uh, just tuned in it, uh, as I was in the uh, Mastery Academy. Ha, ah, anyway, better late than never, brother. You can watch that on the replay. Best virtual meeting yet? Really? All right, man, I'm glad you're digging this one. Did I miss the whole lesson? Yes, you did, man. But that's all right, man. You're here, man. Uh, any software to help us targeting clients by SMS, WhatsApp, SMS? Call? I don't have anything for you, Shrutesh, on that when I do. It's a good question. I might even look into that. Targeting client by SMS, WhatsApp. I'm just so, to me, I my SMS play is after I made the connection. You know what I mean? Texting is almost like the, if I had a pecking order of how I connect, and I'm not trying to, because uh, Sparrow's Tale says he uses it somewhere in his stack, but I use it all the way at the bottom of my stack. To me, SMS is really, uh, you know, I, I got to have some relationship before I start using SMS with people because I know how I am. Maybe that's how I think. I get SMS from people, I just delete stuff. So if you send me stuff on like, you know, like Instagram, for example, uh, I have people who send me, hello, hello, dear. Hey, Victor, how's your day going? I mean, I don't even know you. Don't ask me stuff like that. I don't even know you. I just delete them. So don't ever, in case you're thinking about that, don't ever ask me anything like that. I'll delete you. Uh, last one here, and we're out of here. Appreciate it, Vic. We'll try Loom and not uh, cause you any troubles, man. Oh, that's all right, man. I'm having fun with you, man. Perhaps any body language tips for virtual selling? Uh, I did one a while back. I might have to revisit it, which is almost like not so much body language, but we talked about frame casting and stuff like that. So anyway, so final notes, man, before I get out of here. So again, there are a lot of positives and pros to selling virtually. So let's not let's not get down. Let's not let's not buy into the negative hype, right? And, and again, I think it's not this or that. You know, face to face or virtual. I think it's going to be a blend. And I think Patrick had uh, the best perspective of the evening when he says, "Hey, man, let's figure out how we can connect with people, qualify them via virtually, and then maybe meet with them when we can face to face." So I think that blend, finding that mix, is going to be key. Think about, again, how these companies are being shaken up by what's going on and what's happened already. Think about their cost structures. Think about how virtual selling is actually saving them money because they don't have to travel. The distances aren't there. I can hire more people. My hiring pool is much bigger. There's so many things that are going that are going right when you're doing virtual selling that we just can't discount. So if it, tomorrow we go back to a face-to-face -face world, I still would say, wait a minute, let's keep some of this virtual stuff because some of this virtual stuff is effective if it's used in the right way in your sales process. So uh, I'll just sign off and I'll just say the following. Remember, do me a favor, share these live streams with at least one person. That's all I'm asking you to do, man. Share it with one person. Check out the Sales Velocity Academy. Some great courses there. I'll be doing some public webinars uh, probably at the end of the month or next month. 
Yes, I will be charging for this and it'll be content that I haven't covered on here yet, but it's gonna be very specific for very specific things. So I'll be announcing that more, but do me a favor, share the live stream with at least one more person. And as always, remember, Victor Antonio, Sales After Dark, reminding you, selling ain't hard when you know how. Take care, guys. See ya.